Hi friends, welcome back to another video. I'm Grace and today the video that I'm going to be doing is my reading wrap up for the month of April 2021. So in April I managed to finish six books which numerically is maybe one less than I've been averaging this year so far but when I looked at my page count it was pretty on par for what I um, sort of set for myself. So in terms of ratings I actually had a pretty good month. I'm going to hopefully put my stats here if editing grace can figure out how to do that i believe in you but in the month of april i had three five star reads two four star reads and one three and a half star read and my total page count was 3140 i believe the actual number will be on the screen but if it wasn't that it was very close to that I think what I'm going to do is start with my lowest rated book, which was 3.5, still pretty good, and move up to the highest rated books of the month, uh, just so that I can sort of end on a positive note. So the book that I read this month that I rated three and a half stars was Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey. And so as a lot of you probably know, um, or if you haven't heard of this, that's cool, but uh, Leviathan Wakes is the first book in the Expanse series, and I have definitely heard about this series for a while. This book was published all the way back in 2011. It's hard to believe that that was 10 years ago, but it has been a while that this series has been around, and it's been adapted into a TV show, which I'm interested in watching. So Leviathan Wakes is a space opera sci-fi series or rather the first book in a series that is set, I believe, in the distant but not too distant future of humanity, like somewhere between 100 and 150 years from present. I enjoyed it. The way that I can describe this book, I feel like, is like an action movie in book form. Like it was very action-packed and things kept happening the whole time, so I was never bored. But we follow two uh, main characters, Holden and Miller, and Holden I really liked. At the beginning of the novel, he's the executive officer um, on an ice hauler ship that hauls ice from the rings of Saturn to other places in the solar system. Um, and so you get to know him and his crew pretty well throughout the novel, um, and Holden is sort of like a idealist type of character that wants to do the right thing and wants to protect his friends um, and I really connected with him on that level. The other main character that we follow, Miller, um, I personally didn't connect with as deeply. So Miller is a detective or a police officer on a uh, series and he is tasked with looking for a girl whose uh, parents are very wealthy and they want her found and brought home. Um, and so his storyline surrounds trying to find this girl and trying to solve the mystery of what has happened to her. And he was an interesting character, but I didn't, I didn't connect with him on a super deep level. So there were certain uh, things, events at the end of the book, without spoiling anything, that were supposed to have an emotional impact, I think, that didn't impact me like as greatly as they were supposed to, just because I hadn't completely connected with Miller. And just on a random side note, I am a hockey fan. And the fact that the two main characters were named Holden and Miller just kept making me think of the 2017 New York Rangers and Nick Holden and JT Miller because that's how my brain works apparently. So overall, I thought that this was a good time and I am really interested in a lot of ideas that were brought up here, but I don't want to generalize by saying that I don't think I like sci-fi by reading one book. But in general, I didn't find this book like swept me away as much as fantasy generally does. And I, and I don't know whether it's just that I like the ideas about the human condition that are brought up in these sorts of stories when they're wrapped in like a, a magic bow, like a fantasy bow, rather than a little bit more realistic yet futuristic bow. I'm, I'm not sure. like if that's why I didn't 
enjoy this book to the fullest or whether it was just the fact that I couldn't connect with one of the main characters, but I think I'm going to continue on with the series. I was definitely entertained and I had fun. So yeah, that's The Expanse, Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey. The next book that I read in April, or rather, this was actually the first book that I read in April, but my first four-star read of the month was Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahirin, I believe is how you say that. I, I'm sorry if I messed that up. This book essentially follows two main characters. One of them is a witch and one of them is a witch hunter. And through shenanigans, they end up in a situation where they are forced to get married, but the, the witch hunter obviously doesn't know that his new wife is a witch because that's a problem. So I just, I thought that this book was really fun. My rating ended up follow, falling somewhere between 4 and 4.5, but I didn't feel like I could round up, so I ended up giving it a 4. But this was just like <laughs> supremely entertaining. Like I loved the uh, female main character, Lou, who's a witch. Um, she was just so like vibrant and headstrong and like very memorable. She's the type of character that just like jumps off the page, very charismatic. And so she was like my uh, focal point or rather like definitely was what drew me into the book in the first place. And so her male counterpart, Reed, um, I liked him, but I thought that he started out a little bit more bland just because like he's part of the Institute of the Witch Hunters and they're very, um, they're like a religious sect almost. So, so they have very rigid like rules and guidelines and, and he's been brought up to follow them his whole life. So it's not necessarily a failing of his character, but I felt like he was the uptight guy at the start. But um, I really, really liked to see uh, these two like deal with each other and and both of them grow as characters and their interactions and their banter um, it was very very fun um, and so i really liked the romance here because uh i i love a good like it's not quite enemies to lovers in in this because it's not like the the two of them are personal enemies it's more of like an enemies on principle <laughs> Um, situation where they are just star-crossed because of their positions in life but when they get to know one another on a personal level that's when things get very interesting. The other thing that I really liked was the magic system. Um, I thought it was really interesting because I for some reason went into this kind of thinking that like it was gonna be a romanticized view of witches and it very much wasn't. The magic was pretty dark actually and there were some pretty like intense and scary capabilities of the magic. It was very interesting to see that like magic had a cost, like performing magic requires something from the witch that is performing it as well. So I really like that. I'm always a big fan of magic having a cost and that was the part of the world building that I liked the most. This wasn't a perfect book, like I thought that towards the climax and the conclusion, like I guess you would call it the third act, things really sped up and a lot happened like at once almost because comparatively the first two thirds of the book was build up and, and character moments and like character interactions and, and building the world and then it, it seemed like all the important events just like happened and then we were done. So like I liked, I liked the events that happened, I just didn't necessarily love their execution near the end of the book so that's what brought it down a little bit for me but I still really enjoyed this um, and I would totally recommend this to anyone who um, is looking for like a, a fun romance with witches and a little a little bit of enemies to lovers sprinkled in if that's your thing so yeah again this was four stars I really enjoyed it the last book, or the second book, that I rated four stars in the month of April was Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, and I did a actually quite long dedicated review for this book already, um, that where I go into a lot of depth. So if you are interested in Black Sun, you can definitely check that out. I have spoiler and non-spoiler sections of that review. but. 
Um, I really did enjoy this book. Again, what a gorgeous cover that it has. So Black Sun is essentially about a couple of main perspectives that we follow. There is one main perspective in, the, in a city called Tova, where we're following the Sun Priest, who is the leader of the Celestial Tower, and that is sort of the religious group that has dominion over the city of Tova. So we follow this priest, and then another uh, character that we follow is Ziala, a ship's captain with mysterious heritage that you don't really know much about as the reader, but you start to learn more about her heritage throughout the book. And so she is captaining a ship to take our third main character, a man named Serapio, uh, to the holy city of Tova. And so Serapio is a very mysterious figure. Um, he was mutilated as a young boy for a greater purpose, but you don't really know what that greater purpose is. So that's part of the mystery of the book as well. And, and you sort of get to watch Ziala and Serapio's relationship, friendship grow um, as they travel to the holy city. And essentially the race is on for Ziala to get Serapio to the holy city. Uh, before the winter solstice and you don't really know um, why until like until the climax of the book so that's obviously a spoiler but the whole book is sort of full of mystery of um, what's going to happen on the day of convergence or the day of the winter solstice in Tova and why Serapio needs to be there and what role different characters have to play. So uh, I did really like the characters in this book for the most part and I also thought that the world building that was inspired by pre-Columbian Americas was very cool as well. Um, the city of Tova has the celestial tower, the religious group as I mentioned, but it also has what's what are called the sky made clans and there are four major clans that rule different parts of the city uh, and so they're inspired by pre-Columbian Americas. Rebecca Roanhurst has drawn from a lot of cultures here um, and like the result was very cool. Like the environment in this book was unlike anything that I've read and I really, really enjoyed it. So the reason that this was a four for me and not a five was the ending. And it was just because, like I mentioned, it's a countdown plot, but everything that we were waiting for the whole book to see happen uh, happened very quickly and I didn't feel that it was given necessarily the weight and the significance that we had come to expect after waiting for it the whole book. So um, I'm very excited. This is the first in a series. I'm very excited to continue because it has gotten me very intrigued for what this is setting up and what is to come and so in that sense I, it did its job I really enjoyed it um, but yeah again this is four stars but I would definitely recommend it uh, for anyone who's looking for fantasy that's not, not just inspired by the classic like Western European history um, I think that you would really enjoy this okay so moving on to my five star reads for the month of April the first book that I read in April that I rated five stars was The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan and this is the third book in The Wheel of Time and so with it being the third book um, I'm not really going to say much uh, because a lot of concepts are spoilers in themselves but The Wheel of Time is a hugely popular series and I doubt that uh, most people who are watching booktube, fantasy booktube no less, need me to tell them about its existence. But um, one thing that I did say in my review is that for a book called The Dragon Reborn, I was shocked at how little uh, this book was actually about the, the Dragon Reborn, the, the person who is that. So. That wasn't necessarily a negative, like I, I really liked the characters that we followed in this book and I, I really enjoyed myself, um, but there was that. Honestly, I don't even know what to say, like this was a pretty wild ride, there is one character in particular, uh, I doubt that this is a spoiler, but Matt, uh, I really enjoyed him in this book. The, in, in the first two, um, I was personally wondering why he was such a favorite of so many people. I, I didn't really see it. It's not that I disliked him. I just didn't see it. And I feel like now I'm starting to see it. Like I really, he was very entertaining. And I still love Perrin, who is um, 
my personal favorite for the moment. The girls had a great storyline in this as well. Again, like spoilers, I don't really want to say anything. Regardless, I really, really enjoyed this. It probably ties The Great Hunt for like my favorite of the three so far. Uh, I've liked both of them better than I liked the first book and so hopefully I'll just continue to enjoy myself. I know that people say that you should read the first four books before deciding. Like I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna continue, like I've been liking it, uh, but I am very intrigued to know where this story is going and I'm just baffled that there are still like 10 more books or 11 I guess I I don't how how is there that much story we'll see I guess anyway the point is this was a five-star read for me uh, I loved it and yeah the wheel of time the second book that I rated five stars this month was the good daughter by Karen slaughter and I got this book used um, this is not how I usually treat my books. The spine is looking pretty rough. It actually doesn't um, it doesn't lay flat but you know regardless um, this was a fantastic book. I loved it. I've never read Karen Slaughter before but this just makes me want to go pick up more of her thrillers because um, what she did with her characters in this book just made me so attached to them. I felt like I knew them and I loved them. Um, first of all, I should describe the book, but I feel like the best way to do that is just to read the back because I attempted to describe this book uh, before and it didn't go super great. So, 28 years ago, Charlotte and Samantha Quinn's happy small town family life was torn apart by a terrifying attack on their family home. It left their mother dead. It left their father, Pikeville's notorious defense attorney, devastated, and it left the family fractured beyond repair, consumed by secrets from that terrible night. 28 years later, Charlie has followed in her father's footsteps to become a lawyer herself, the ideal good daughter. But then violence comes to Pikeville again, and a shocking tragedy leaves the whole town traumatized. Charlie is plunged into a nightmare. Not only is she the first witness on the scene, but it's a case that unleashes the terrible memories she spent so long trying to suppress. Because the shocking truth about the crime that destroyed her family nearly 30 years ago won't stay buried forever. Obviously this sounds super intense, and honestly it is. On my review on Goodreads I listed the trigger warnings for this book, but there is quite a bit of graphic content in here. and. Um, I would refer to my Goodreads review, which I will leave linked in the description of this video because I don't want to get flagged by YouTube for using language. I will just say proceed with due caution. If you uh, don't want to read about violence and things of graphic nature, this might not be the book for you. So essentially, this story starts in the past uh, with Samantha and Charlie as teenagers and it shows what happened nearly 30 years ago and then we jump to the present where this new tragedy is occurring which does involve gun violence and does involve a school. Even though the storyline, the plot, is about these events and the tragedy that happened in the past and the tragedy that happened in the present, what it's really about and what stuck out to me the most was the family dynamics of the Quinn family. And Charlie and Sam, the two sisters, are the main characters and they're both just such like deep, flawed human women. Like they are not even, even close to being per portrayed as perfect. Both of the daughters are lawyers and both of them are like extremely confident uh, badass women that are just like not perfect. Like they get angry, they fight with each other, like they have moments of vindictiveness and maliciousness but they're good people and it's very clear that they're good people and they try to do what's right and they were just... I loved both of them. Like, they hit me right here. I was so attached to them. And the other thing is that both of them were in their 40s, which 
I know is on the younger end, like being in your 40s is still young, I just feel like I don't see that a lot. Usually a character that age is like a wife or a mother, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel like they're not usually given the main character treatment where like you really dive deep into their motivations and their feelings and um, Karen Slaughter like 100% did that for both of these ladies in this book and so I loved that she did that. Like, if you love great character work and like love a good mystery along with that with just like a sprinkle of courtroom drama um, then I would definitely say that like this would be a great book for you because I thought that she did a great job of resolving the mysteries and like I was satisfied with the way that the plot threads came together but that was not why I was so compelled to keep reading this book like the reason was her main characters so uh, five out of five for me loved this and I'm hopefully going to be looking at more Karen Slaughter books soon because this was just phenomenal so definitely recommend five out of five so the last five-star book that I read in April, and also the last book that I read in April, which could quite possibly not be any more different from a horror thriller graphic violence book, is my first foray into the Discworld by Sir Terry Pratchett. And so this was Mort and that is the first book in the death subseries of the Discworld books. I would call this a comfort read just because it was so entertaining and like silly but not silly at the same time. Like it very much had the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy feel and like supposedly Monty Python as well. I haven't seen Monty Python myself but I've heard it compared to that and just based on like the dry British type of humor that seems like very much the vibe um, and that is exactly what you got in this book and like this book was exactly what I expected in a good way while also not being what I expected also in a good way. I don't even know if that makes sense but like the good things that I expected going into this like they were there and they made me happy in exactly the way that I expected them to but the actual storyline and the world building and the characters like I didn't really know what to expect from that and I liked what I got so um, mostly this is like focused on characters it's focused on death and Mort and Isabel and Albert and Death chooses Mort as his apprentice at a job fair, which is just hilarious. But this book is about Mort learning the trade, so to speak, and some shenanigans go down because it's not exactly easy to do Death's job. So that's all I'll say, but this was just hugely entertaining and I'm so glad that I was able to fit this in at the end of the month. So those are the six books that I read in the month of April. We have one 3.5 star, two 4 stars, and three 5 stars. So overall, a really enjoyable reading month. I would recommend most of these books for different reasons. So, you know, if you have any questions about my thoughts, you can definitely drop a comment and have a conversation with me, and I would love to chat. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I read this month, uh, or if you're planning to read any of them, or let me know what you read this month if you were watching this. And so, thank you, that's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you liked the video, and click subscribe if you would like to. And have a great rest of your day. Bye.